studies have shown that most spiritual experiences are related to better mental health. However, there are some situations in when we ha can have some doubts if some experience is a mental disorder with a religious of or spiritual content or if it is a spiritual experience that could resemble, could be similar to some sort of um, mental disorder. The American Psychiatric Association created the category Spiritual and Religious Problems, exactly to stimulate and foster these sorts of investigation. For example, many spiritual experiences are related to hallucinations. People can hear voices, having visions, feeling the body controlled by or influenced by an outside source or things like that. So, uh, there are several discussions about this and the need for further investigation. A recent study performed by the World Health Organization with more than 200,000 people in more than 50 countries around the globe investigated the prevalence of psychotic experience in general population. By psychotic experiences, they mean hallucinations, seeing things, hearing things, or even some delusional beliefs. What they found was in, in the whole sample from 50 countries, they found the prevalence of psychotic experience in the last year was of 12%. One in eight persons in the whole globe had some source of psychotic experience in the last year but experience not related to drug use or related uh, to, to sleep, when they are falling asleep or when, or when they are waking up during this period are common having some kinds of hallucination with no specific uh, clinical significance. But what was very interesting is that from this 12% who had psychotic experiences, less than one tenth had actually a psychotic disorder. So most people having psychotic experience do not have psychotic disorders. Many of these people can have some sort of spiritual experience, non-pathological spiritual experience. To help to make this differentiation, our research group have investigated them the literature, the scientific literature, and also performed, performed several studies. Based on this, we have provided some guidelines that would help us to make this distinction. These criteria that we will discuss now, they are not absolute. They would help the clinical reasoning in making this differentiation. So, each of these criteria are suggestive of a non-pathological experience but it's not absolute, as I said previously. The first important aspect is when the experience does not cause psychological suffering. If the experience does not cause psychological suffering or occupational or social impairment. If the person having the experience is not suffering, is able to develop their work activities, their family homes, and so on. Another important aspect is when the person does not have other symptoms suggestive of mental disorder. For example, if a person does not have cognitive symptoms, disorganization in their thoughts or in their behavior. If the person keeps a good social, social skill, social ability, social capacity to deal with other people in their jobs, in their families, in their neighborhood. Another aspect suggestive of a, a non-pathological uh, anomalous experience would be when the person has the capacity to control that experience and also when the person 
uh, have some growth, personal growth, psychological growth throughout time. Different from a mental disorder when usually there is some kind of personal disorganization or impairment throughout time. In non-pathological experiences, often the person has control over the experience and the person also recognizes the unusual or anomalous character of that experience, sometimes fearing to share, to share this experience with other people. Finally, another important aspect is when this experience is uh, compatible with some well-established religious or spiritual tradition. Even if the tradition is not of the person himself or herself, but if that sort of experience that the person is uh, living is in some way understood well in some well-established religious or spiritual organization is also suggestive of uh, non-pathological experience. As I said previously, each of these criteria are basically uh, helpful tools to help our clinical reasoning. Uh, but to make a good evaluation, a good assessment of the clinical implications of each of these anomalous experiences, is important that mental health professionals well-trained perform the evaluation and then to help the person in or seeking psychological or psychiatric treatment and or seeking also some sort of spiritual or religious support to help them develop their experience in a health and positive way.